So you're saying is, Jason Statham needs to make movies about bees instead of sharks. I'm gonna burn this place to the ground. Hey guys, welcome to another review. Welcome to my first uh, review of 2024. First January movie. I'm starting off with a good one. The Beekeeper. I had a chance to see this with Mean Girls in uh, Night Swim, I think it was. After Mean Girls, I was like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm not going to watch Night Swim. I heard it was shit anyways, those typical shitty January horror films. But uh, I saw Beekeeper first. Uh, it's a Jason Statham January movie. I'm like, what what am I in uh, what am I in for? I actually never saw the trailers for this movie. I had nothing. I knew nothing about this movie. I literally went in this movie blind, and I'm glad I did. Holy shit! This movie this movie was a blast. All right, well I'll get to it. Um, <laughs> uh, this is crazy. Um, I gotta talk about Jason Statham, man. The the dude is so unique because I don't know what to expect going into all his movies. I'm either gonna get like a huge pile of ass. Or actually something enjoyable. Like last year I saw three of his movies. Two of them made my worst of the year. Expendables 4 and The Meg 2. Both horrible films. But then I saw the Guy Ritchie movie, Operation Fortune. I thought that was very fun and very enjoyable. I thought it was pretty underrated too. And just sometimes he can make a movie like The Bank Job or Wrath of Man. And it's like, wow. He actually tried and it's actually enjoyable, compelling entertaining like spy like he was funny i'm like jason statham could be funny <laughs> unironically like i never know what i'm gonna get with jason statham so going into this movie i'm like is this gonna be an expendables 4 or is this gonna be a wrath of man kind of situation no it's neither it is pure cheesy crazy 1980s 90s tango and cash commando level silly entertaining bloody action and i was all in for this one man i was so in for it uh i needed something like this <laughs> to start the year off man uh it's literally about a man who's a beekeeper for this like rich old lady who like you know they have this friendship it's almost like a mother-son relationship and he talks like you know he has a troubled past because he was like a former operative that killed a lot of people, but now he's a beekeeper and finds peace and harmony and helping this lady with her bees and stuff. But then she gets scammed by these people who take all her money and she, you know, ends up killing herself. And then he goes on a one-man vengeance to get revenge for this lady and kill them all. And it's insanity, and I loved it. It was great. <laughs> Uh, the movie stars Jason Statham, you got Josh Hutcherson, Jeremy Irons, Minnie Driver. Uh, everyone's great. Like, Jason Statham was just born to play roles like this, man. His motivation is so clear. Is it jumbled and make no sense and he can do things that are just, huh? <laughs> like, if you're going in into this movie thinking, like, you're going to nitpick the shit out of it, man, you're going to hate this movie. Like... This is like Tango and Cash entertainment. Like, this is this is fun stuff. Like, I love Tango and Cash. That's a silly, ridiculous film, but I love it. This is what, like, Beekeeper is. It's just brutal, and you just basically run with it as it's going. Like, you just, you know, you know what I'm in for. Like, what's, what's he going to do next? And the action is solid. The kills are so brutal. Jason Statham is clearly having a blast in this movie. Uh, and yeah, I just, I was just thoroughly entertained. Josh Hutcherson is so over the top, and I actually really enjoyed him in this movie. Like, I'm not always big on Josh Hutcherson. Like, oh, he was so bad in that Five Nights at Freddy's movie, and I always thought he was the weakest part of the Hunger Games movies, because I always find he's just so bland. He's such a bland actor. He actually was having fun. He's like this, like, guy who's just rich, snobby dick that just gets, like, joy to fucking people over and it, it, i could tell how josh hodgson was having fun with the role i really liked it jeremy irons is just amazing and everything he's great mini driver's great uh, a lot of these other actors who i don't know everyone just does their job well and just more importantly the action is a lot of fun it's brutal it's violent and the movie has a sense of humor about it and 
The movie's directed by David Ayer, which is hilarious because David Ayer is not always a great director. Uh, we all know the shitty Suicide Squad movie and Sabotage and, man, people forget he actually did direct, like, good movies like uh, End of Watch and, um, uh, was it, Fury and Street Kings, underrated. But we all think of, like, Bright and Suicide Squad and just, like, have this, like, gross taste of David Ayer. But you know what? He directed a very, very entertaining action film. It's clearly meant to be over the top it's clearly meant to have some fun sit down enjoy some popcorn and candy and just enjoy the bloodbath mayhem of jason statham fucking up these rich people like that is why this movie was made and it, it wasn't a movie that he was trying to be like this like you know cool suave buddy cop movie like he's made like five times he actually just made an enjoyable brutal film and it's a character, you know, what's his name in the movie? Mr. Clay. I, I, that's Jason Statham's character. That's the name of his character, Mr. Clay. <laughs> I love it. It's so great. Uh, he's a great character. He's so fun to root for. Just, like, he's just fighting these evil people, and they're just evil for the sake of evil. <laughs> it's great. It's Oh, God. It, again, it's, like, something out of the, the 90s or something. I just, I had so much fun with it. There were so many moments, I was like, that is so stupid and so dumb, but I'm all in for it. It's like the ultimate like, guilty pleasure movie for me. Uh, and the thing is, like, I hated last year's guilty pleasure movie. Like, The guilty pleasure movie of 2023 was Cocaine Bear. It was such a stupid, asinine premise, but people loved it. It was so silly. A bear on drugs. And I, I didn't get on board with it. I just thought it was idiotic and stupid and just i it wasn't my kind of shtick and stupid i just didn't like it i could see why people liked it though i just wasn't on board this to me is my cocaine bear <laughs> like it's so dumb so ridiculous it makes little to no sense in a lot of moments but i was here for it and i loved watching it completely asinine but definitely a movie i would love to throw on again if it's on netflix or amazon i watch it again and have fun with it. it's it's enjoyable ridiculous am i gonna point out the flaws i can list a shit ton of flaws it's a very very flawed movie but if you want a jason statham bloody action revenge movie that makes no sense you're going to love this one. It's a guilty pleasure. It's the guilty pleasure of 2024. Scale 1 to 10. I'm giving Beekeeper a 7.5 out of 10. Ridiculous, but entertainingly ridiculous. So let me know in the comments below. What is your uh, ultimate guilty pleasure action movie? Comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. And join the dark side.